Hi everyone! Today I am super excited to share with you the library's latest STEAM project for you to try at home. The project I'll be showing you today is making pretend dinosaur fossils out of salt dough. So this is an example of what the project may look like when we're finished. The supplies that you will need for this project are very simple and you most likely already have them at home. The things you will need are flour, salt, warm water, a mixing bowl, and some dinosaur toys, like these little guys, that you can use to make the impression of your fossil. So go ahead and grab those supplies at home or swing by the library in January of 2021 and pick up our steam kit. It's a little baggy that looks a bit like this and has nearly everything you'll need, including a couple of small dinosaur toys. Once you have all those supplies, I will take you step by step through making your own salt dough. But before we can do that, I would like to talk to you a little bit about real fossils. If you enjoy dinosaurs and you want to learn even more, the library has lots and lots and lots of great dinosaur books that you can check out and read at home. You could learn more about fossils or different types of dinosaurs. There's lots of options. So next time you're in the library, ask the librarian where the dinosaur books are at, and we will be happy to show you our dinosaur section so you can learn even more about the amazing creatures that inspired this project. Now, before we talk about how fossils are made, I think it's important to remember that fossils are not just of dinosaurs. There's lots of different types of fossils. In fact, most fossils are fossilized sea creatures like fish or coral. There's also lots of plants that are made into fossils. So it's not always dinosaurs. In fact, it's very rare, very special that scientists are able to find a fossil of a big, exciting dinosaur like the T-Rex or the Brontosaurus. Uh, those are all very rare, which is one of the reasons they're really exciting to read about. Most fossils, or many fossils, are made in this way. An animal, like maybe a dinosaur, dies, and its body falls into a muddy area like a riverbed and its body is covered by mud or sand. After many, 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 many years, that mud and sand actually turns into rock. It is pressed and hardens into solid rock. But the bones, the body that was covered by the sand is actually gone. It's been worn away by groundwater. It's not there anymore, but it's left behind a space in the middle of the rock where the bones used to be and in the same shape as the bones. So we can still see the shape of the dinosaur, even though the actual dinosaur is gone. So this is an example of the type of fossil that paleontologists scientists who study fossils may find in the ground and dig up to learn more about dinosaurs. That is how certain fossils are made on Earth, on our planet. Now let's talk about the pretend fossils that we are going to make in our project today. Remember, you should grab flour, salt, warm water, a mixing bowl, and your dinosaur toys. If you have used one of our STEAM kits, you'll have these teeny tiny little dinosaur toys to use for your fossils. It might be a good idea to grab another toy from home if you have any larger dinosaur toys. A bigger toy will have more detail on it, which will make for a more interesting fossil. Either way, grab your dinosaurs and let's get started making our salt dough. Before we make the dough, I just wanna give you a quick heads up that salt dough is not for eating or putting in your mouth. Uh, just like Play-Doh or modeling clay, this dough is used for building, it's used for creating, it's used for crafts and art, it is not used for eating. That means that you cannot eat it and your pets cannot eat it. So do not leave salt dough creations out where your dog can grab them or another pet. 
but let's go ahead and get started. I have already put our salt in the mixing bowl. This is half a cup of salt. If you are using the steam kit, it's already proportioned out for you and there's a small baggie that has an S for salt and a little bit of a bigger baggie that has an F for flour because the next thing we're going to add is one cup of flour. We're going to mix the salt and the flour together in the bowl. All right, see it? We're just gonna mix it all around so that the salt and the flour all mix together. This is gonna make a, a decent amount of dough. So you could probably use this and split it between two people, depending on how many fossils you want to make. All right, so I've got it all mixed up. The salt, the half a cup of salt, and the one cup of flour all mixed up in my bowl. And now I'm going to add some of the water. I'm not gonna add a full cup of, this is one cup of warm water. And I'm not gonna add all of it yet. I'm gonna do maybe half, maybe about half. And then mix it all together with your hands. So this is gonna get a little messy, but that's part of the fun. This is gonna be a little hard to do for me sitting down. So just mix it with your hands. You could use a spoon if you wanted to, but using your hands is, I think, a little bit more fun. So mix that water around seems like I've mixed most of that water in so I'm gonna do a little bit more because it's still mostly kind of clumpy let's do a little bit more water like maybe one-fourth mix 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 so as you're making your dough if you find that the dough feels very dry, it looks a little crusty or clumpy, then you probably need more water. If you find that the dough is very sticky, like sticking to your hands and sticking together instead of being smooth, then it probably needs more flour. So I'm going to go ahead and take this out of the bowl now um, because it's starting to form into a dough. So I'm just going to stick it on the table. Sometimes it's nice to sprinkle a little bit of flour on the table for the dough because this is pretty sticky. I think I might have put too much water. And I'm just going to get all those pieces out. And squish it all together. Yeah, we definitely going to need, I think, a little more Flour. So let me grab a flour cup, a little bit of flour in there, a little bit of flour in my hands. So now that we've mixed the salt and the flour and the water together, we're just going to keep mixing it up and doing something called kneading. So kneading is when you kind of push and massage the dough with your hands, with like the palm of your hand, so it goes over and under, and just keep mixing it together. Here it goes. And the instructions that are in your steam kit say that you should knead the dough keep mixing the dough with your hands for about five to eight minutes until the dough is smooth so I'm gonna keep working on this and keep kneading keep pushing it around with your hands just like this uh, until it feels a lot smoother and remember if it's feeling super sticky and it keeps sticking to your hands. Maybe a little more flour on your hands would be good. Um, if it's 
all crusty or clumpy, maybe a little bit of water on your hands would be good instead. Um, but I'm gonna keep kneading for a couple minutes and then I'll pop back in to show you what it looks like when it's all smooth and ready for the next step. Our dough. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to break the dough up into little clumps, little segments of dough that are about the same size as whatever dinosaur toy you are using. So I've got pretty small dinosaur toys, so I only need a small piece of dough. In fact, I could probably make it a little smaller than that. This dough already feels a little sticky. So one thing I'm gonna do is put a little bit of flour on the table. So it doesn't stick to the table and a little bit of flour in my hands. So it doesn't stick to my hands. So I'm forming it into like a disc shape. Like the examples I showed you earlier of the finished dough, um, it's a bit of a circle. It looks like a little bit of a disc that's just a little bit larger than the dinosaur toy we used. You can use any shape you want at this point. Dinosaur fossils, when we dig them out of the ground, they're never perfect. You know, they're a little broken. There's all sorts of different shapes. Sometimes it's only part of the dinosaur. In fact, it's usually only part of the dinosaur. It's not the whole dinosaur that we find. So you can do whatever shape you want. Uh, just make sure it's thick enough, maybe about like that, that you can press the toy down into the dough without going all the way through the dough. So I'm going to take one of my little dinosaur toys and I'm going to put a little bit of flour on the side of it where I'm going to press it into the dough so it doesn't stick to the dough, but you don't have to do that step. All right, so I'm going to take it now press it into my disc of salt dough. And you wanna make sure that you're pressing on each part of your dinosaur. You wanna press on the head, on the middle, and the tail, so that we get an impression, a mold of the whole dinosaur, not just one part of it. Okay, let me show you what I just made. There. That is what I just made in our salt dough. So this is still very soft and it would be easy for me to break it. Uh, if I wanted to pull it apart and try again, I could do that now. If you aren't happy with what your dinosaur looks like, you can just fold it all back up and make it another disc again and try again. Uh, but I think that one turned out okay. So this is the dinosaur and this is the impression in the rock. That would be a fossil. I'm going to set that aside and make one more. So you probably have a big clump of dough and you just want to keep on sectioning it off into smaller amounts for each fossil that you want to make. So this dough is going to make lots of different fossils, maybe like five or so, depending on how big your dinosaurs are. Again, I put the flour on the table. What should we do? This guy? We will press, press, press into the dough. And again, you want to make sure you're pressing on the tail and the head and the body. And then pull it up. Pull it up. There. And there is our brontosaurus. So you can keep doing this, making little shapes out of your dough and pressing dinosaurs into them. You can press more than just the dinosaur's body. One other thing you could do is press its feet into the dough, like do do do. So it makes tracks that will also be interesting fossils. Uh, so you could do it either way, just press its whole body in there or press parts of its body or just press its feet into the dough and make all of the different fossils that you want, however many you want to do. And then the next step is to let them dry. There's two ways you can do this. One way is to leave it out without touching it 
leave it out on a tray somewhere in a cabinet maybe or somewhere out of reach from your pets uh, leave it out for a couple of days actually probably like four days it would take to air dry it if you want to let it dry just by setting it out in the air it would take about four days um, but the other way to let them dry is to put them in the oven at 250 degrees for about two hours at least two hours so it takes at least two hours for these to dry in the oven and once they are dry they will look a little bit more like the ones I showed you earlier so here's an example of a dry one that I dried in the oven for a couple hours uh, here's another one here I love the way that these look right now but you may want to add a little bit of paint to them too so that is the last step after they've dried you can either admire and display your fossils as they are or you can do another step by painting them with some acrylic paint you could paint them like dark browns so they look more like fossil colored or you could paint them bright colors um, that just like a fun dinosaur color would be nice whatever paint you want to do I haven't painted mine because I kind of like the way they look just in the dough and I'm happy with them just like this so that is the final step for our project today mix it all up knead it for five to eight minutes break it up into smaller little fossils press the toy inside and then put it in the oven for a couple of hours at 250 degrees and then paint it if you would like that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed your dinosaur fossils and the whole process of making these at home. I will see you next time. Bye.